to move on, but thank you for that. We're going to move away from talking about the recreational use of ecstasy and go back to the trial and its potential therapeutic use. Now, we know historically that MDMA was used for therapy, and it still is, particularly in America, even though it's illegal. And we managed to film one of these underground sessions. Take a look at this. Somewhere on America's west coast, Danielle is about to undergo a therapy session using MDMA. It's totally illegal. She's been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, following an abusive childhood. I was raised by a father who had a very tragic and unhappy life of his own and took that out on two of his children. The violence was very unpredictable in my house and that resulted in a lifetime of anxiety for me. Danielle's first MDMA session was a year ago. She'd never previously taken a Class A drug. It was a little bit scary for me because I had never done any sort of psychedelic substance before. Um, I had no experience with it at all. First, before taking the MDMA, Danielle and her therapist decide what they're going to focus on. Today, it's the recent death of her abusive father. I feel like I, I haven't sort of dealt with it mm -hmm. in, in the way that I probably need to. Her therapist only agreed to take part on condition that she was unidentifiable in this program. She faces a long prison sentence if caught. I run a lot of risks. Um, it is illegal. And from a professional point of view, it's very uh, harshly condemned. But I believe in the power of this tool. I have seen the results in many people. MDMA makes you more willing to talk about things that you otherwise just really don't want to talk about. That's it, just like a vitamin. <laughs> Sometimes you have very fixed ideas about who you are and how things should be, and the drug is showing you there's another way to look and widen your perspective about your life. It's hard to let my jaw relax. It's, it's tense, my jaw. Yeah, it's OK. Oh, I don't feel good right now. You don't feel good? Mm -mm. It's, it just feels really strong all of a sudden. Yeah, okay. okay. An hour in, and as the drug takes hold, the therapy session begins in earnest. I don't think anything excuses treating a child the way that he treated me. But when I think about how, how hard his life was and how sad it was, and, and that he died so young, It makes me sad because I feel that sadness now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. At his funeral, I was just thinking. You know, he's dead, and that's sad, but I'm okay. There's no way of knowing if it's the use of MDMA by Daniel's therapist that has made her feel better. But she certainly believes that it's finally helping her overcome PTSD following a decade of conventional treatments that she says have failed. There's been just an overall general reduction in my day-to-day -day anxiety. It's like my anxiety was up here and now it's, you know, down here. It's, it's just come down. I'm willing to be filmed taking the drug because I'm hoping that people look at this and it will open their minds a little bit and maybe change some perceptions about what it is and how it can help lots of people. MDMA as an aid to helping sufferers from PTSD go from agony to ecstasy? Really? After the break. <laughs> now, before the break, we saw a MDMA therapy session. Professor uh, Val Curran, um, you were very interested in posing negative thoughts to people in, in the MRI scan. Why did you want to do that? We wanted to see if MDMA could change negative memories, just as yesterday we saw how the me positive memories were enhanced. And we were particularly interested in, in negative memories, which are key symptoms of some psychological disorders, like depression, but also like PTSD, as we've just seen. I mean, that is a very big uh, thing not to crack, isn't it? Let's face it. Um, is it really plausible that you could? I think it is plausible in the sense that we showed how MDMA can en enhance trust. 
So if you build MDMA into psychological therapies and we see how it acts on the brain, then... Well, let's go look at the, the brain, uh, David, and see exactly what's happening when you're triggering negative thoughts like this. What, 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 where, where, where did all this make any kind of a difference? So, like last night, memories coordinated by the hippocampus, the blue bit here, when people are remembering negative memories, two other regions are activated. The amygdala here, which is a kind of emotional nerve center, and this prefrontal cortical region, which is part of this default mode network we talked about before. Now, what we find is that under MDMA, this high-level control region here, this prefrontal region, is switched off. And you can see that up there. Well, let's look at, oh my goodness, yeah. yeah. I mean, there, there were previously we saw um, Keith's brain, which had blue dots both sides, yeah. one switched off. This one is switched off, and switch, that switching off means that people are able to engage with the traumatic memories without the huge emotional overlay, which can then interfere with therapy. So as we saw in that particular clip, the person can remember the problem with the father, but, the, but control the emotions and therefore deal with it intellectually. This is amazing. If I'm right, you're saying that you can physically see through the MRI of mm -hmm. this slice of the brain the dampening down of um, and actually almost extinguishing of negative oh. emotion. That's, yeah, that's right, exactly right. You're seeing that under MDMA, the, the memories are less emotional, they're less negative because you dampen down this emotional center.